<laughs> Brands are moving aggressively into Web3. One of them is Adidas. In this episode, my guest Dominic Blylevens and I will talk about how Adidas is doing it, how is it going for them and where we think it will go. Hello and herzlich willkommen to the Bernhard Neumann podcast. Here you get insights, assessments and knowledge around the topics of NFTs, Web3 and crypto. I'm your host Bernhard and today with me is Dominic Blylevens. He's a Web3 and NFT expert. He's also, uh, this is your second appearance here. So as so a welcome back. So uh, you know he's a, he's a good uh, man, man to talk to. And uh, yeah, Dominic, I, I also share my web3 journey with you you're also an nft degen and so it's my great pleasure to have you here today yeah thanks so much for having me a second time uh so um great to be here and looking forward to the topics awesome let's let's get started maybe you introduce yourself real quick to the audience and then we we dive into the topic Yeah, let's do that. So yeah, my name is Dominic. Um, on Twitter, you can find me at Believens. And I am usually a UX designer. So I use experience design for websites, um, for voice assistants as well. And now in the last two years, a lot of Web3 NFT projects, understanding them, buying a lot of them um, with losses and wins uh, as usual. And but not only from a from a collector's perspective, but as we are, we have an agency called Craft Clarity. We are helping brands and companies to move in this field. And so it is definitely important for me as well to understand how brands enter the space so we can help our clients. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very similar line of work. So it's still um, yet to come uh, to, to do a collaboration, to work together. I'm excited for this. And yeah, the topic today is Adidas, a uh, big, big brand uh, moving into Web3. And I would like to first um, discuss with you, you know, and, and show the audience how they did it. What have they done so far? And and I think the, the first remarkable thing is, you know, when a brand um, makes this step, okay, we, we decide we want to we wanna use this technology, we see the future here, we want to position ourselves uh, in Web3, in the metaverse uh, in, at some point. Um, what do we do? Do we just, you know, launch something or, and uh, maybe this is a suggestive question, you know, um, Adidas, uh, yeah, did a collaboration and uh, maybe, maybe you want to explain real quick what they, what they actually did to enter Web3. Yeah, for sure. So it was a really interesting time. Uh, it was about one year ago um, mm -hmm. when uh, Adidas and Nike announced their Web3 um, plays. And Adidas uh, announced a partnership with one of the biggest collections, probably the biggest um, with the Board A Biach Club. Uh, but not only them, um, which was quite interesting. They also made a collaboration in the, like the, the same collaboration was also um, G Money, uh, a uh, influencer or um, yeah famous person in Web3 and Punk's Comic, another NFT project. And so it was not only uh, seeing it from one perspective. They made this collaboration with um, uh, and attracting through that probably a big community um, not only from the Port Apes, but everyone who follows G Money was seeing it. Um, and they, it was not only a collaboration to get his name, but they consulted him for a long time. So they got the real input from someone in the space. And I think that was really important for the strategy. Yeah, very cool. If, if I may add here, so exactly. So they said, okay, um, maybe it's not uh, we, we're not just going to go cold turkey and just try to establish ourselves even though i feel like a brand like adidas they could have pulled it off but um yeah they said let's let's find very strong partners who have a big uh, audience already and uh, just to compare here as you mentioned nike uh, they did uh, maybe the even better play as it turns out so far who knows but they bought a big company that was already established that already had a a big collection several it's a, i mean it's a it's a company that does wearables digital wearables all along and so 
they went with acquisition while Adidas went with collaboration. And as you might guess or might not guess, um, where are we today? Like, who do you think is ahead right now? What can we see here? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. I think the Nike play was very interesting from the um, perspective to acquire talent. So it's not only about a collaboration, having your own project, but they actually acquired the whole company with all employees. So from that play, instead of hiring Web3 experts, um, they just bought the whole company. So I think from that perspective, it was a good play. They they bought um, CloneX, which was an avatar, or still is an avatar collection, which is uh, still has a floor of 7 ETH. So it's still widely successful. Um, the revenue they generated was is also higher than the uh, revenue Adidas made, and so from that perspective, um, you could definitely say until now it was more successful. Uh, from a perspective of the Web three spirit, collaborating with with people, talking with them, um, it felt. Uh, at least, and that's my personal opinion, a little bit more like Web3 Spirit to just collaborate um, with projects instead of acquiring them. But probably that's a, uh, I think Nike's play was very smart as well. And right now we have um, maybe looking back, um, how did Adidas, like they announced the collaboration, but what did they actually do? Um, they bought an ape, right? Uh, a blue fur ape. And that's now, um, the, this ape is called Indigo Hertz. And with that, they actually created a mascot uh, or like, like, a, like a character with an own Twitter profile, with their own appearance. Um, they dressed him with Adidas wearables already. And so now they have like this character, which is, um, I think, also a smart play to have not only the brand Adidas, but the character indigo hats and with that throughout the past um yeah the past year they um did several activations um mm. so that was really interesting to see yeah I, I think you mentioned a couple of cool things so it just occurred to me like you know the the risk they're taking also i feel like it's a, quite a big brand risk to to do this collaboration in the way they did right using this mascot and using a uh, an nft of this big collection i mean so far it's a it's a great effort by by the board of yacht club uh, everything good but uh, there, there's been scandals you know you don't know so you have a, no. a third party risk introducing into your uh, ecosystem which looking back i don't know seems uh, seems very risky and maybe unnecessarily risky um and i also yeah i, I think uh this was a really, really good acquisition by by Nike. It, it looks like, as you said, uh, I think, first of all, they're just really good at what they're doing, which is uh, digital collectibles, digital fashion, and Nike wants to get into this. So well played. It it gave, gave them such a, a jump start. Um, like we, we can get to this, you know, Adidas, they took basically a year to get going really you know mm. a year and uh, in 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 normal uh, in the normal world maybe that's okay you know yeah it's a company let's let's get it moving we have a little slower wheels here at a big company but in nft space this is uh, you know this is like 10 years and i'm not kidding like it, it really is kind of like 10 years and so um yeah interesting interesting play so Right now we have Adidas. So as you mentioned, they have their uh, their brand is kind of based also on this other NFT brand, which is the Bordeaux Yacht Club. Um, their their mascot is an ape. And um, now, how they how did they progress? Like, how, what's what's going on? What did they promise people? What have they delivered so far? Yes. So it started with an initial mint of uh, 30,000 NFTs um, uh, priced at 0 0.2 ETH uh, and yeah, was sold out pretty quickly. And then um, we could uh, burn this NFT. So basically you give uh, this uh, NFT into the ether uh, uh, away and uh, redeem it for physicals. Uh, these physicals are a tracksuit, a hoodie, uh, a, a beanie, um, and uh, two hoodies. 
Um, oh, I got two hoodie. Uh, sorry. One yeah. hoodie. <laughs> sorry, I got two awesome. NFTs. So sorry for the confusion. So yeah. tracksuit, hoodie, beanie. Okay. And you would assume that Adidas as a fashion producer is able to deliver on these pretty quickly, but we are still waiting uh, for the tracksuits. So that was a um, observation where lots of people were quite um, confused. Um, the reason for that is they actually outsourced it, which is kind of crazy. No way, um, really? Yeah, yeah. Like in order to be able to do global shipping for like everyone everywhere to cover that, um, my knowledge is uh, and... Uh, don't put me on the on the uh, you know <laughs> uh, is that they actually gave it uh, to someone. Of course, they check quality and they did everything. But it is um, in order to have this global shipping in an easy way um, from from one place. Um, they yeah they mm -hmm. work with um, someone else and um, yeah I I got the hoodies. Um, the hoodies are uh, really good quality uh, and yeah for the rest we are waiting. Um, and after this redemption, now we have the phase two. Uh, so it's another NFT, uh, again, uh, with the ERC-1155 standard. So that means it's uh, the same NFT for everyone who has it. And now we're waiting. Um, we also relieved, uh, um, received an airdrop of so-called capsules. And these capsules will probably, um, the reveal is actually uh, happening it's very tonight. soon. Yeah. It's tonight. When you're hearing this, you probably already know uh, what it was. Uh, so, Dom, uh, we, have, we have the chance now to predict what it is and then ooh. be wrong or be right. You know, like that's, that's a fun exercise. Uh, I, th I say uh, these are variables. Um, we already saw previews on the Indigo Hats account on the Punks comic and on Gmoney, and all of them had high res 3D renderings of uh, their brand, let's say, or of their, it looks like a jacket or a coat or something. So um, yeah, I would assume that these are variables um, Adidas has, they're, they're working with Ready Player Me, where you can design avatars and that you can now like use these variables and, and, and actually, yeah, run around with that. That's okay. my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so to, to sum it up uh, real quick, so we have Adidas, uh, yeah, they did their mint, they did this collaboration, then a long time passed. They said, okay, we promise you some. Uh, utility in the form of physical uh, goods, you know, makes sense. They're a fashion, they're a sports brand. Uh, those took forever, which which was really confusing. Um, and it also is not very, um, you know, imaginative, to be honest. You know, like, of course, you know, like, cool. Uh, now we get uh, some some merch from you, your, your clothing company. Um, and so, uh, but so they took their time. Um, and now it seems like things are starting to move. And, and this is exciting with this wearable. Uh, same with, uh, I go with you here also. I think it's going to be wearable. It's, it's very obvious. I don't think we're, we're really, uh, yeah, uh, being, being really uh, great in predicting here. Um, and so the, the question uh, that I want to get to is, what do you do with wearables? You know, wh why, what do you do with digital wearables right now? Um, yeah, that's that's. Do a you great have an question. answer? What what, <laughs> what do you do? Uh, so I think, of course, it is a, a metaverse play, uh, but not only that. Uh, I think it's more uh, we are building our digital identity every day. Everyone who has a Twitter profile picture longer for a week is building an identity, right? And no matter if it's an NFT or not. Like even if you have a, a portrait shot, like an actual photo of you, uh, if you have that on social media, on also on your WhatsApp profile, like everywhere where you interact in a digital way, I think is our identity and how other people might see us and recognize us also in the digital space. So for example, I have my profile picture, not only on Twitter, but also on Instagram and even on WhatsApp. Like that's like... Uh, uh, identity and with that 
we have also the game engine or like the, the virtual worlds which already exist, like Decentraland, Sandbox and everything, uh, where, of course, variables make even more sense. Like you can walk through this world. It's like a multi uh, uh, MMORPG, like a World of Warcraft, you know, like you walk, you have armor. Now, like with these avatars, you have a jacket and a hat mm. and everything. And I think that is also part of our identity. How do we dress? Just like in real yeah. life, how do we dress? What's our fashion, you know? And I think that's coming into the digital space now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally see it down the line. I don't see it right now. However, I'm somehow excited about this. I don't know <laughs> why, but like when I saw the trailers, like really high quality 3D renderings, right? And I, I thought, okay, this is kind of fun. Maybe I dress something. Uh, you know, but um, yeah, obviously uh, digital fashion makes total sense. And um, we were both at a, at a conference last week and we, we heard this, uh, this woman um, speaking, right? And she was yeah. very impressive in, in telling her story, uh, how she grew up um, playing video games and how the digital, um, the, the game, you know, was kind of also her youth. Like she can identify with, her character in this game, in this world. And it's a it's a digital avatar, but like it, it meant a lot to her. That's where she had many experiences, many connections. And so I think it, it, it would be really wrong to dismiss this whole uh, metaverse avatar uh, thing. Like it's, it's very real for very many people already. And once they have ownership of uh, their avatars, I think things get really interesting you know if you have a house uh, and you live in it but you maybe for rent you know like you don't you don't build a, a a whirlpool around it or like you don't invest a lot of money to make it great right uh, but if it's your own all of a sudden i think you care a whole lot more about it and so that's that's really exciting so i think there is definitely a wearable play that's why all the fashion brands are in here and where I want to uh, lead this conversation now is, and and we actually had a really cool conversation yesterday already, um, is, okay, what am I dressing now? So Adidas, nice, we have wearables, but where do we put them now? Do we put them on other collections? Is uh, is Adidas positioning themselves as, as you know, the, the tailor for, for every um, NFT collection or... Um, maybe they they have their own plans. What's what's your thought in general, also on you know the the whole avatar for brands thing, kind of? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a very interesting topic where we will see lots of uh, movement. We, if we're looking at the Clonex, they have their collection of avatars, and they are also going into the variables. Um, Adidas doesn't have that yet. Um, they have the uh, avatars through Ready Player Me where you can design your character, but it's not an NFT right now. And I think the big question is, do we need it as NFTs? Do we need a um, the core character? Uh, let's call it the core character. Um, do we need that as NFT? Um, Clonex does have it, or Nike, you know. Um, we have it with all the other PFP collections with apes and cool cats and everything that's out there. And... Will Adidas launch their own NFT avatar collection? It might be the case. Um, the the artwork will be interesting to see. Like, what which, which direction are they going? Are they staying close to uh, humanoids, like like actually like humans with different maybe classes, like robots or whatever? But like in this direction, in the animal, like you know, Indigo Hats is an ape, but they cannot just <laughs> Do another ape collection. We, like, we're having apes that's not here. Working. <laughs> so that will be very interesting to see. And then, no matter if it's an NFT or not, we will have, I think, like, what do we do with the variables? Um, we can already uh, dress them in the metaverse, but I think we will be able to have dynamic NFTs exchanging the variables, which also represent then on Twitter, for example, like on Twitter, there is a Web3 integration. You can link your NFT to your Twitter profile. Not for Europe, I think. Still not available. 
Uh, but Elon will make it happen. I'm sure of it. So, uh, <laughs> so there, we will get pretty quickly there that we will have a linked avatar without Twitter and Instagram Meta. They're also introducing NFTs. You can already like you will be able to sell NFTs on there. Um, having your uh, profile picture there is also like a must, I think. And at that point, we need more dynamic NFTs because a static PFP, I think people will get bored by that pretty quickly. Of course, I just said like a few minutes ago, like you're building this identity and people recognize you. But I think the recognition will be through the core avatar plus a certain style of fashion or like how you dress. Is it like modern or I don't know, cyberpunk or whatever you want to dress up? Uh, I think that will be like, the brand, but you will have dynamic NFTs and the ability to exchange the, sh the variables. Yeah, that makes so much sense to me. So I, my, my thesis is also, um, uh, yeah, my thesis for, for digital avatars is that you, you don't want to have the same, like we watched the movie ready player one. Okay. This is one movie. This is not, uh, you know, it doesn't have to happen, but it seems unlikely, uh, that, that we want to walk around with the same thing especially if we can be everything you know i can be a dragon i want to be a dragon sometimes this is pretty cool and so um makes total sense and what you mentioned dynamic nfts meaning they can change um they're still nfts but there can be change happening um and it can be all on chain is that is that correct yeah so it depends on how you define on chain like um in this so I, there's one example where you already have a dynamic PFP, uh, NFT, uh, mm -hmm. lots of acronyms here, but uh, <laughs> so basically you have a, with Fluff World, for example, you can, you have a core avatar and you can exchange the background and the music. So it's like animated 3D rabbits, but also the party bears, like they, it's from the same ecosystem. They're actually interoperable. So you can use backgrounds from, the fluff collection for your party bears and you can already exchange them to your taste and put them mm -hmm. into another background or music and yeah. with what what will come and we already know this pretty sure is that you will be able to exchange clothing accessoires everything for the party bears but probably i assume also for the fluffs and you go onto their site you log in and you have to buy the other background and the other music you want to have in there. Or if you're talking about variables, the variable as a separate NFT, mm. you go in there, you make the changes, uh, confirm it with a with a transaction, uh, or with a with a signing. Actually, not no transaction, just a like a um, free signing, and they change it in their backend. So it's not a hundred percent on chain. Yeah. yeah okay but it is pretty close to it. And it works, yeah. So so when when hearing us speak, hearing you speak, I think one can think, I mean, come on guys, uh, grow up, you know, like changing some clothing, changing some background. Like, first of all, we can do this in Web2 perfectly. Um, but I think you would miss the point if, if, you, if you go that route. I think there's really something to it. Um, it to me, it makes sense. Um, to me, it also also would make sense to have a 3D version of myself, which I then can dress, you know, because like, otherwise I take a picture every day, a new picture, you know, with wearing something new. But I think we can progress from this, you know, it can be digital. I Maybe it's the image of me or it's my avatar, but I can express myself with it just like I do in the real world um, and changing the clothing, changing the background, changing the music is that expression and people already do it for as long as there's the internet basically you know you want your avatar to be fancier than the other one cooler um, you want to change it you want uh, whatever people do in games um, they're doing it and so I think I yeah I wouldn't I would not disregard this just because because it sounds a little silly um, there's, there's more to it, and that's uh, what what the, all those brands are banking on. You know, they understand people, um, and they they have to understand people, and people will want to express themselves digitally as they already do. Just like you said, you know, they, we're already doing it. Um, it's just gonna be enhanced, and uh, we're gonna be 
having more ownership of of what we do there. Um, and it, the, I think the very important thing you you just mentioned is the interoperability. Like that's when it gets fun. You know, if Nike um, makes something that maybe even my Adidas avatar can wear. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I mean, in the in the real world, it does work. You know, like yeah. uh, even even if I yeah only wear Adidas, I can wear a Nike hat, no problem. And so I, I think this is where it gets to. And and I think the the discussion should a brand have an avatar? Um, I think could also be interesting. Like, what's your opinion on that? So I would. Before going to that, I would also like mm -hmm. to quickly touch on the topic, like, like, why do we need it? And that's something we should regularly ask ourselves when we're like in bubbles, no matter if it's a Web3 bubble or anything else. But we are, of course, like in that Web3 space. And at first thought, it always makes sense. At, at second thought, you're like, I mean, like I could have an J, like a JPEG of some illustration and dress it up and put it as a profile picture, like why, why, right? And there are different aspects to it. I don't want to go too deep into that because that would probably uh, uh, take another podcast, but yes, it's part status symbol. Like, yes, I'm, you know, I have the same NFT from the collection where Snoop Dogg has one. Uh, it's a big sense of community to be able to access real life meetups, conferences, meet like-minded people. Um, people are paying for this forever, you know, like go to a conference, marketing conference, look at the ticket prices. You're going to be like the big ones. It's pricey, expensive, pricey. Right? Yeah. And so access to that. Uh, and also in the digital space, like the community sense, I think is super um, important. And so there are different aspects to it, but uh why why do we need to redress them now right uh, and i think that's definitely a discussion where it still needs needs to be proven right is it ne is it needed uh is it the the case where everyone will have that um i'm not sure maybe it is um like if i if you compare it with the real life of course we could all just run around with a black shirt and a blue jeans and white sneakers and we're done you know everyone like the same but humans are not like that like you said we want to express ourselves we want to show that we stand for something we want to show you know uh no matter if it's the car we drive the clothes we wear the events we attend uh the the i i always say it's like a like tribalism right like uh we are fans of Bayern München. we are fans of Uh, gaming but a specific game and i think that's just the next uh, stage of evolution of belonging belonging to a community that believes in something and there are projects which stand for specific things uh in mm. the nft space and i think like that's the whole package at some point you're like yes i want this avatar i want to stand for something and i want to redress it because i want to be exp i want to be able to express myself yeah Yeah, beautifully said for sure. I, I think that's, yeah, I, I don't think I have to add much. This is just <laughs> very well said. I think, you know, like to, to, to come to an end also for, for this podcast, there is much more to it than, uh, you know, like people that should be grown up um, trying to dress some, some weird digital avatars. Um, I think you can, as a listener, as a as a viewer, you can get also the sense from all the money that flows in, all the brands that go in. There is probably more to it than uh, than the nerds uh, playing around with digital technology or something. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I think for Adidas to to close the loop here, um, it totally makes sense to have this um, dynamic um, PFP where you just can, uh, ex yeah have more more variety in it can express yourself better um, i think this this seems to be the future and yeah people so so what adidas is trying to do you know they move people from face to face you know they want to build um slowly but uh, consistently so far consistently means uh, year by year that has to um yeah it has to pick up and um yeah so so 
you, you wanted to to add something to the to the avatar thing yeah so uh i think like the the coming back to your question which you uh um asked before i detoured uh brand avatars i think will become a really big thing i think we will have we already seen uh, the rise of the virtual influencer and mm -hmm. that come can come from a brand but can also be just a virtual influencer which appears from nothing but we see more and more brands having these avatars and the quality of uh of putting like face movements onto a digital avatar with a high resolution will is is already really good and you could do this in real time so i think we will see more and more um, avatars for brands which are live connected with a actor and this mm -hmm. actor uh is doing uh, we, we already have that um uh, the project my pet hooligan uh is a different rabbit nft project and they are doing <laughs> news broadcasts with their avatars mm. announcing the winners of of giveaways pretty easy but it the quality is so high that it could be like a pixar thing right mm. and i think this kind of where Indigo hats, for example, we will get a high-res 3D Indigo hats, and at some point, this character will speak as Adidas to us as consumers and promote the newest drops. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this will happen, and this can be live, right? And I think like this, more brands will move into this direction and have like their avatars. Yeah, I mean, for for a mascot, totally get it. You know, the 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 scalability of different languages and all this is amazing. You combine this with AR, which uh, AI, which you are also uh, quite into. You can also combine it with AR. Like, just if it has an Pleasure. A in front and uh, it's a short <laughs> word, it's probably great. Um, no, but um, yeah, you you also what what you said. Let me think. You know how how Nike and their avatars they they gave everyone those three D files and they kind of told them, hey, uh, kind of become a, a virtual influencer with those. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah, there's there's a there's benefit to it. You know, because you immediately have the brand recognition. You 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 start at a different level. But on the other hand, I just thought to myself, you know. Like, why not be yourself? You know, why do you need this this avatar? I mean, there's 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 benefits to it. What do you appearing what do you as say a brand? About that? Uh, you're, you're talking about appear or like how should a brand appear or no, how, how, how to should an individual? People? You know, a brand makes total sense. Individual, yeah. like you now buy a clone X in order to become a clone X influencer yeah. with not your face but your clone X. Yeah, I think. Can that's you see a, this? It's, it's a specific use case if you oh, you would need a probably a separate account you would have a need to have a concept like a news show about web3 and do i don't know right uh so that's a really specific case and probably pretty niche but for example anyone who has ever used a snapchat filter or like instagram has it as well like where your face gets turned into something else you already have used a adjustment of reality of yourself and it's similar because for example the fluff project i mentioned earlier the these rabbits we also have the 3d models and there is now individuals from the community building snapchat lenses that everyone can become their fluff and then mm. use it as a snapchat lens and i think that will be like the technology will become more and more accessible do we all have to become virtual influencers? Definitely not. Will we play around with it and for fun send uh, funny videos to our friends as our character? I'm pretty sure it will happen. Uh, yeah. So I think like the, this differentiation between a professional career mm. or, or, or profile will be there, but also the more fun ways. Yeah. Funnily, like, you know, the, the iPhone had this function, still has it, where you can, like, right. have this the monkey. Emoji. Yeah, I, I feel like it's so funny, but it never caught, uh, at least for, for my friend circle, never really caught on fire. But I, I had yeah, a lot a of fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, okay. No, uh, I, I feel like this is a, this was a wide-ranging conversation. Very nice. Um, I think, yeah, if you combine digital avatars with AI, there's... Uh, 
unbelievable possibilities here. Um, I think it makes total sense for brands to have their avatars. Uh, it's interesting to give them out. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a billboard. So I was, I was in the subway today, and I thought, what a crazy concept that on every clothing piece there's also the brand. You know, like I'm just, you know, like here, boom, boom, boom. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing the the logos and the commercial. I'm a commercial for for several brands at a time, and everyone is. Yeah. Kind of a funny concept, to be honest. But since it's social signaling and tribalism, maybe it makes sense. Um, but walking around as a Adidas NFT, you know, like <laughs> an Adidas avatar. Yeah, uh, here, here, I'm advertising your brand. Maybe we should get money for it. I don't know. Maybe like Who free knows? clothing for all. There you go. Free th closing for the for the physical. Uh, yeah. What we never touched on is is the whole digital uh, movement. Um, real quick, uh, that's maybe something. Yeah, we we need to add. So so the trend is towards um, brands developing styles, developing um, um, yeah clothing digitally first, which is probably already done anyways for for everything, and bringing them out digitally and then giving the people the ability to make them real, to get the f physical version of it. And uh, this seems to be a, a pretty cool trend because it's also more sustainable. It's more deliberate. Uh, any, any last thoughts on, on this trend? I think the interesting piece here is, and that's also a technology that still needs to be, there's a proof of concept and we will need to see if it is actually needed. Uh, there are brands, yes, having the digital one, making it into physical, that's one possibility. Uh, one technology that is looking at it from a different side is there are companies putting chips into into fashion pieces. And you can scan this like, like it's an NF, NFC, which you can scan, and which then says if that's the original fashion piece. Uh, for like high value clothing, that's a re really interesting uh, thing. Like it's a limit. Let's say it's a limited drop, just a hundred pieces. You want to know when you buy this physically, is it, is this the original? And it's not only for that. It's also for in the wine industry, people are working on this to have high value wine chipped that you can scan it and you can see is it actually the original? Was it opened? You can actually track. Like there is a whole industry coming up of chipping things which are an NFT tracked on the blockchain, scannable through an NFC. And that's a, that's a, that's a big thing. And NFT pro projects are releasing stuff in this direction. Azuki has like their, it's called PBT, physically backed token, exactly working like this. And I think that will be one of the next directions we will see more and more of. Also for the variables of Nike and Adidas. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is needed, again, we will need to figure out the use cases. Yeah. Quite a twist here on the digital. I'm not sure if you answered the question, but uh, I love the concept of uh, of chipping things. I, I had a whole podcast episode on that. Uh, crazy. Like, I think the, the world hasn't woken up to it yet. Like, it makes so much, so much sense to me. Um, uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, I, yeah, I want to come to a close here. We also have a Twitter space we, we're going to host in a, in a little bit. So uh, this is not going to be when you see the recording, but but right now. Um, Dominic, thank you so much for being, uh, being a guest. Uh, as always, very interesting. Thank you for all your perspectives. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me again. Uh, I think every conversation... How was the second time? How was the second time? Let's be honest here. <laughs> Even I think better. like a more uh, fluid conversation in comparison to the first one where we talked about so rare, a specific topic. Uh, I like both um, both directions or both ways, you know, like a specific topic and covering in depth everything around that. Today, we had a more open conversation covering a range of topics. I like both. Um, and yeah, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Like you said, we have the Twitter space uh, actually every Wednesday. So uh, and probably when this podcast will come out, you will be able to do a re-listen. So if you 
didn't have enough from us talking to you in this podcast episode. You can just listen to the Twitter space. And yeah, so uh, looking forward to you. Uh, come back for a third time in a few months maybe <laughs> love it thank you uh, for being here thank you everyone listening everyone watching uh, till next time hope you have a good time